Welcome back to the next video in my series about building a 300B amplifier. And you may be wondering, well, what's all this random stuff sitting on my desk? Well, this is the way I determine what size chassis I need to order to put all this stuff on. And you can see here we got the iron that we are repurposing from our Kegger Blue Glow KT88 single ended amp. We got our 200 milliamp transformer, 375 volt, zero, 375 volt. We have a 10 Henry 200 milliamp choke. We got two 5K 25 watt output transformers. And I think this iron will actually work well with a 300B, at least to start with. In the future, we may try some ISO Tangos or some Electroprint higher end output transformers, but those were going to be about $500. And it felt like, at least to start with, let's try what we have and see what it sounds like. So we've kind of laid this out in a way that is very similar to how I did my Blue Glow amp. And I really like this layout where you have all the AC and rectification on one end of the amplifier away from where all of the audio signal stuff is happening. So we're going to do that again. And like I said in my earlier video, this transformer needs to be at 90 degrees to these output transformers. And if you look at the schematic, the flow of the electricity, the AC would come in here, would go through the transformer. Then the next thing in the chain is this rectifier and then the choke. So this kind of flows with that. And as the power goes towards the front, it gets cleaner as we go. There'll be a, a big uh, capacitor right in here. There'll be another capacitor right in this area. And then you'll see later in my power layout, I'm going to do what I'm calling a hybrid split rail power supply that the, the two tubes will share the transformer, the rectifier, and this first choke. But after the power leaves this choke, it goes through two smaller chokes that each have a large 250U reservoir capacitor and that will help isolate each transformer and tube from each other that they'll be drawing their power through their own choke and off of their own reservoir capacitor which should help it act more like monoblocks but avoid the expense of having to have two transformers and two big chokes. So now that I've decided I like this layout, I got my tape measure out and that's 17 inches and that's 12 inches. And I think to make this amp any smaller footprint than that would end up crowding things too much considering all the parts that I need to put in this thing and how large these transformers are. So one of the things I've decided to do is include DC filaments for the 300B. I know there's a lot of controversy around that. And some people say that only AC filament direct heated triodes really sound good. And I, it just seems like a lot of work to try to make AC work. Also, the transformer that I'm using has got two separate 6.3 volt windings which is higher than the 5 volts that these 300 B tubes are looking for so I would need to do some sort of voltage adjustment and I'm not sure that just doing a resistor would protect the tubes from being over vaulted on startup and so I plan on setting these up with individual rectifiers in this area right here between this and this, between this transformer and these outputs. 
and then run the DC over to each two and then have a 5 volt regulator bolted to the underside of the chassis as a heat sink close to the tubes to eliminate any inductance between the voltage regulator and the tube filament that we're going to be powering. The other thing that I want to do is isolate the filament AC that's used for the driver tube from the output tube. So I've ordered a small 6.3 volt, 1.2 amp filament transformer that's going to get bolted right here in this area next to the rectifier. And then those filament wiring will be run in the corner around and then over and then up to the two tubes here. And that will keep the AC that's being run around here away from the signal, which I'm going to be reusing this little wiring setup here that has the RCA jacks through shielded cable to this audio note potentiometer and it'll be coming over the two signal tubes. And so the heater stuff's going to be going in this direction, away from it. And also will be, if you think about it in 3D, that the signal stuff is going to be in the bottom of the amplifier and this AC will be in the top upper corner of the amplifier. So it's even further distance from each other. The other thing that I'm decided to do was to use a two inch tall chassis. I think that's going to be tall enough to fit everything in here. And I, the, the blue glow amp I built was a three inch deep one and it just didn't look as good to me. I'm going to switch out to this other chassis that I was considering and show you why I decided not to use it. Okay, so here's a chassis I picked up that I've been looking for a project to do with it, and I f was thinking that this 300B was perfect for it. This is a really nice chassis. It has um, came with this already installed. It's got a nice bottom plate that's ventilated. It's got um, the top plate's aluminum with a, the sides are steel. Nice thick aluminum top. It's got it bolts down so that this top can be changed out when you if you decide to do a different amplifier with it so you're not you can repurpose the chassis the only problem when i started looking at laying all this out if you look at this like this is a 17 inch wide chassis but because of the way this step is made that this plate bolts to you really lose like an inch on each side of available space to like mount things to. So then the chassis ends up being 15 inches wide instead of 17. And then when I, so when I started like putting these parts in, like if I set that transformer there and then I set this one here with enough room for the screws to fit in, There's no space in between the transformers. And I know that inductance falls off with like the square of distance. So every few, even a few millimeters of distance between the power transformer and the output transformer can help reduce inducted hum between the two. And this limits how space here where I can put a regulator. And then the same thing in the, in the front here when I put this choke here and it's safely away from this you know, lip on the edge, then there's not enough room for the rectifier tube between these two. And so as much as I wanted to use this chassis for this project, I realized that just a regular hammer and steel chassis allows the transformers to be mounted all the way in the corner and like this one can be mounted all the way in the corner over here and that by being able to be mounted over in the corners creates a lot bigger space here between these transformers and just gives me more working room so 
I ordered a 17 by 12 by 2 inch chassis to mount all this stuff on. So next I want to show you an issue I had with this Edcore power transformer and how I resolved it. When I put my blue glow amp together, this transformer had a pretty loud hum to it. And it wasn't as much physically out of the transformer itself, it's that it was vibrating the top of the chassis, making it make noise like sort of like a guitar does, you know, with the body of the guitar vibrating to the strings, making the noise. And so, you know, I tried a couple of different solutions that people had online about like driving wedges between the, the core and the windings and that really didn't change anything and so my solution I got these little rubber insulating feet that bolt in from the top and have a nut a stud with a nut to attach it to the chassis and these rubber insulators totally got rid of the noise the other thing I wanted to show you too was one of the things that I read in several different places of concern with a metal chassis was the inductance that happens between the core of the power transformer and the output transformer. And so to try to help block that, I installed this piece right here, which is a piece of copper clad circuit board with the copper on the top side towards the transformer that I painted black and I'm going to paint the bottom of this black just in case you do see it and then with these little feet that are acting as a standoff you're distancing the transformer from the metal chassis which as I said earlier the inductance goes away with the square of the distance so having that piece of copper underneath the transformer with it spaced off from the chassis should eliminate any possibility of inductance through the top of the steel chassis to the other transformers in the amplifier plus as I said it got rid of the hum that this amplifier had in it I'm probably not going to revisit how to drill holes that sort of thing since we did that in the previous video and I'll just link to the previous video where I showed how to punch holes in the chassis and mount different components and that sort of thing for people that have never done this before and are jumping into this video series. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying this series. I'll be excited to get more parts here so I can really get into building this thing and I'll see you at the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't so you can be notified when the next video in this series is uploaded. And have a great day.